Hey YouTube, welcome back to uh, my Malifaux C. Hoffman Guild Crew and Display Board uh, series. I'm gonna get ready to goop it. Right now you see the board has been sculpted. Let me kind of get in here. I know the, uh, a lot of lighting on this, but you can see it went in with the uh, hot knife and put in uh, cobblestone where I drew it and just kind of went freehanding it in. And you can see all that and this all comes apart. The minis, let me see the minis down. And what I'm going to do today is goop this thing. So whatever's going to be stone will look like stone. So the bridge will come out. There I sculpt out of a, a iced tea bottle. I'm going to probably green stuff uh, sewage coming out of the uh, pipe. And that'll be put in later too. I'll probably just uh, goop that in and then sand it. And then my little torches. These are just temporary little uh, nondescript things. They're going to be a little more tricked out when I'm done. Uh, this... These uh, cocktail sticks that I, uh, or forks that I cut up and put in, I want to leave those on and make them look like they're part of the um, masonry work. And you can see here, I tried to do some sculpting of the um, inner foam core with a hot heat gun, and that was a mistake, but I'm going to go in and fill that later and then uh, work from there. So this part is just going to pop out. I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm just going to goop this off. Then when I put it back in, I can sand it down to make it fit back into the uh, frame itself. And then I can fill uh, fill all this in and sculpt it uh, to be the uh, glowing sewage to match the uh, bases that the uh, minis are on. So um, let's see here. We'll start uh, with what we're going to be using. Um, first of all, this is called Tough Stone, T-U-F-S-T-O-N-E. This is a uh, fiber reinforced uh, plaster, very, very strong and sturdy. Uh, that'll be mixed with, um, well, at f we'll first be adding Elmer's glue and uh, latex caulking. And that'll be uh, bound together. We've got to stir that up first. Then we're going to start adding, get that mixed. Start adding water to it to thin it to a consistency we want to that we can put it on there with some, uh, these are like some cheap Walmart brushes and some popsicle sticks and some um, spatulas. And then we get all that mixed for our consistency. I have some Douglas and Sturgis um, iron oxide black um, pigment powder. This is a giant jar. It's like the size of a small mayonnaise jar full. Uh, this will last the rest of my life probably. And I'll be adding that in because I want to have this uh, really dark to go on. And um, if it ever gets chipped or bumped, you're not going to have white, uh, you know, white showing through of the... Uh, of the plaster showing through will be all the way through a solid color. But it's going to be a thin, thin coat. This is going to be an experiment. This might be something I'm going to blow in front of everyone on YouTube. I've tried to get as much texture on this with the rocks and carving really deeply that when this goes in, it's going to take obscure some of the texture, but maintain enough of it that you can tell it's stone. And I can go in with the airbrush and do some um, pre shading and stuff like that and really get those rocks to, uh, oh, this stonework to pop out and um, work with the different colors and all that. So um, I'm going to mix this up and I'll be back and we'll uh, get to it. Thank you. Hi, we're back. Um, okay, first I put some of the Elmer's glue in the bottom here, probably maybe a little over a quarter cup. And then I have this dap. I usually have the old school ones I use with the gun. I bought this a while ago and just had it up in my thing. I might as well use it up because I have cases of the, uh, the old school stuff. This is really easy to use. I probably recommend this if you're doing small projects. This is so easy to clean up and uh, you don't need that big metal gun and uh, to pull out the caulking. So we're going to try to get a 50-50 mixture of that. And that should be good right there. And then we're going to take a let's try that and then stick and get this mixed up. And you really need to do this is your most important step to get this mixed together first, really combined. If you start throwing other ingredients first, it will, it'll, won't uh, get together. And there's many other, just look up goop recipes. There's many other different kinds. Also, you can do this on like uh, other terrain pieces. You can throw uh, pebbles and sand in it if you want something really, really textured and uh, making a really want a really strong game board or a hill for a game board. This is really, really good stuff for that because it's almost like a, a hard plastic when it's done and it takes paint and primer really easily. 
So we got that part done. So let's thin it out a little bit. I just got some tap water in a little cup here. And let's see, let's get this camera up a little bit higher. There we go. So I've got a little water. And I want it too thin because I'm gonna be painting it on there. I want it to really stick to these walls without sliding down. And I've so got the water in there. I should be rolling on this. Maybe too much. Scrape the edges, and then uh, put that water in there a little bit. Then pull your stick out and start putting your uh, dry ingredients in. This will put it back together, and this is going to make it really, really hard when it uh, dries and cures. And this is an eyeball recipe. I don't, I've never seen anyone have exact numbers on it. I can get a feel for it, maybe screw around on some scrap foam or um, cardboard until you, you find a recipe that really works for you. And then um, we got the Douglas and Sturgis uh, iron oxide. This is barely need any of this stuff. Hmm. Using a spatula. Maybe half a teaspoon. Let's see how that works. And then you want to stay, start, start with as less as possible. Always look like uh, cookies with the milkshake. Mm -hmm. Some more. These jars are pretty inexpensive. You can um, look on Douglas and put that name in there. Douglas and Sturgis, they do sell online. They're out of the San Francisco Bay Area. So they need large quantities of. Pigment is a place to go. This is really eaten up the pigment sizes. Put some more in. Probably going to make a couple tablespoons. That's messy, so you can make sure you have, a, you have one of those dollar store uh, drop cloths on your bar. I recently broke my foot, so I'm kind of limited to where I want to run around to sustain the central part of my house. Is, so we got a nice light gray. It's not nearly where we want it to go. Get some more in there. I just put more plaster in there too. This little bit more. Lower the integrity of the plaster from those pigment in. I am not a chemist, so I don't want to play it safe. I remember, then the plaster's gonna lighten it up anyways. Let's see how it's getting darker. Um, I've also used in the past the liquid pigments you use for casting, and that works really well too. So I just wanted to use this stuff up so we have tons of it. And it doesn't have to be dark, dark black or anything. We want to just make sure it's not a stark white if it gets chipped. So it won't, it won't stand out as much if something happens. Because it to be display points. You're not driving your car, your trunk, or going through a door into your game shop. There we go. And I think this is the color we're getting to. So there. Okay, 
Let's do a little more than that. Are back. I'm just trying to see, throw some of this on here, so that works out. Got a nice piece of cardboard, so it can drip all over the place. It's not going to bother anything. Got my cheap little uh, Walmart craft brush, and uh, I'm just going to try to kind of put it on like cement. This brush is cheap, and I am going to clean this out. It would be terrible. Wait, look at the black. Um, let's see, I'll just do some of the areas that I can use the thick or paste with, and this brush is terrible, people. <laughs> it's funny. This might uh, not be too cute. God, it's kind of gray, light gray and it comes down dark gray out of the cup. It's completely different. Okay. Let's try that. There we go. So I just put a nice coat on and let it settle. Try not to get uh, too many brush strokes in it. I think that might be unavoidable at first. Well, we can sand it lightly later. Just kind of stipple it in. It's like a really thick paint. Hopefully, this will dry nicely and we'll get plenty of a residual texture. I have to go in there and that one turned out kind of nice that side. I'm going to thin this side out here. Let's take long, gentle strokes. Seems to kind of be working. Stipple in these corners. Got some of the edges that your deeper grooves I, I carved in. Stipple those in. Nice. I'll look forward to seeing how that looks when it dries. Start getting into these uh, bigger wall areas. And I think a good technique from here is what I'm doing is going up and bringing it up instead of letting gravity force some of that material down anyways. So keep trying to work it down and you're going to have to stipple, or I am, stippling into the uh, masonry work to get the uh, color in there. Might have to thin it out more, but this is going to be nice and dark. It is so weird how it's, what it looks like in the jar and what it comes out on this thing is like two different colors. You can see how it's got the gray then you, like, you spread it out a little bit. And that pigment really, really takes hold. Until my uh, little masonry little things turn out. I don't want to mess with hands. I'm going to try to get gloves. But I'm going to uh, finish filling this in so I don't bore you guys. And then I'll come back and show it to you. I'll be back in a second. Thanks. We are back real quick. I am gloved up now because uh, this is getting seriously messy. It's probably going to be glued to this cardboard. That'll be fine. I'll cut it away from it and sand it. 
and get it back in that frame. That's one thing I have been doing a separate type of uh, material for the uh, the sewer canal. Um, I couldn't leave it on the frame. It would be too hard to clean up and mask off and that type of thing. As this would be easier just to sand back in because I know that it's going to increase the size of it a little bit, not too much. But um, this brush is about useless now. Um, you ever go to the dollar store, you have those, these are going to be awesome for this. Because what I'm noticing, I'm going to have to go into areas and stipple. Then I can go in later and smooth that out again with another uh, bigger brush. But just to make sure I get the material and all the cracks. And you don't see any white. So I'm going to have to just go through this slowly. And methodically and... It's not going to be perfect, but this is still be an old sewer. So um, I think we're going to keep maintain most of the uh, texture that I was worried about. I can always just use, I like, kind of dry brush some of that goop off and see, I have that, like the, it's like an inlaid cobblestone into like a cement frame is what it's supposed to uh, simulate when it's uh, done. And it looks like this is going to actually work out. See enough texture and the um, I don't know if you can see in there those rocks. That I really beat the crap out of that thing with uh, uh, some uh, stones from the, the garden, and I think it really paid off. Especially the exaggerated uh, texture is going to work out with this, and it's going to actually feel like real rock. So this is going to harden really, really solidly. I, a lot of you probably worked with goop before. If you haven't, there's like I said. I didn't invent the concept, but I've been working with it for a while. I, well, most of my train, like big train pieces, and I have a got the orc, the orc boys in. Another piece that's not finished yet. I built a hill with this stuff, and it's like as hard as like a motorcycle. And it's just crazy. Uh, I get the PVA and the um, acrylic, uh, or not the latex caulking. I guess it's like acrylic latex uh, together, and it really makes a really um, a good chemical bond and plus um, obviously adding the uh, um, reinforced tough stone plaster it really try that stuff out if you have a chance it's can be expensive to get it I'm luckily that place where I buy my uh, uh, large quantities because uh, most of everything is used secret weapon but for large quantities that'd be crazy I just used probably two tubs of a uh, secret weapon miniatures on this and I probably I don't know what I paid for that and one of my older videos you can probably see it wasn't that expensive at all when you buy it in that kind of a uh, quantity is I don't think it's as fine as secret weapons but it, for terrain it's awesome we're not sitting you know trying to um, put dust on the boots of a, a space marine or something like that we're trying just to make a cool looking display base that's like plausibly made out of rock and have sewer running through it so it kind of helps with that so I'm just going to finish this off, and then I'll let it, um, it's, you know, what time is it here? It's 11.30 at night here in Cal Northern California. I'm going to uh, just finish this off, and then um, I will hopefully have this all cured in the morning, ready to uh, maybe take down the game show at the store, and maybe shoot some video of me uh, airbrushing. We'll see you in the next section. Hi, this is a quick little vid while I'm letting everything dry over here on the uh, goop on the... Um, Masonry work. I made two torches. You saw those wire nets I was kind of using temporarily. I put them, blue tacked them up. So what I did, I sanded them the back of them down, got some plastic hard and got those 16 inch uh, rivets I've made a while ago and some green stuff. So now I got um, torches. So I think those will work out perfectly. They can be gas torches. Since they have the, the, you know, the metal bolting into the cement, they can be um, some uh, natural gas plumbing to it. You never know in steampunk era what's going on. So not necessarily have to be like a, like an oil lamp or anything like that, but maybe a gas lamp that's permanently on down in the uh, uh, bottom of Malifo. So uh, that'll be it, and we'll be back tomorrow morning sometime. Um, i got to break this up in different parts because this is getting lengthy. We're probably over 20 minutes of video I've done since I started this evening. So um, I'll see you in the next one. As usual, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you soon.